Oh, oh damn. <laughs> this is like one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> yeah. I'm so stoked. This thing is yeah. awesome. Hey, what's up guys? We're over here with Michael Allen uh, and his amazing Toyota Tacoma. We've been seeing this thing. People have been sending this thing into our page for a, quite a bit. Uh, super cool truck. Um, if there's any truck that's ever been called a sleeper, this is the definition of it. This truck works man um the few times i know our page has featured it it's done very well people are super excited about it finally uh mike and i got in touch with each other and we're here to bring you guys some cool info about it um before we get started we got a bunch of cool new clothes in stock right now we got cool new hats check them out new gear Whoa, where is it over here there we go lots of cool stuff if you guys want to support us it'd be super awesome we'd really appreciate it gets us to keep doing cool stuff like this i gotta get some emmy cool guys like mike <laughs> awesome um so yeah let's let's jump into this thing mike thank you so much for taking hey, the time man no worries thank you for coming freaking perfect weather perfect lighting we got we got nick silk over here where is nick where is nick Bye. there he is what's up nick what's up? nick is rocking the new 3dt right here boom yeah. looking pretty cool and and nick as you guys know is our one of our, our head shredders Freaking Nick and Nelson have crushed it for a long time working with Ken Block, working with Hoonigan, and just making so many bangers for Terra Crew. So thank you, Nick. Appreciate you, my guy. Hey. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, let's thank go. You. Let's go. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah, you're the best, Nick. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. So enough of this jibber-jabbering. We're going to hop into this thing. Mike, tell us all about this thing, man. What year, make, model is this thing? So it is a 2000 Toyota Tacoma four-wheel drive V6 five-speed. Um, I actually got it from my boss, Matt, one of the owners of Total Chaos. Uh, I guess a little history on myself. Yeah, so you work for Total, Total Chaos. Yeah, I've been there for 18 years. Wow. I started at 18, and so I was uh, racing with a buddy, Brian Metro, out of Ventura, kind of in a little clique we had up there. Of yeah. The, the lonely free runners that were out of the scene, me and him and Tyler Nickius and Carl Mason from Shock Talk and a bunch of friends. and To, to our friend uh, Tyler TNT's from up there. Yes, Tyler yeah. TNT. Yeah. So, yeah, we, ended up, we had a uh, high school metal shop together. And right on. Played with some of the same girls together. We had a good time. Let's go, dude. That's <laughs> awesome, dude. Dude, so Tyler TNT's from Ventura. There's a whole pre-runner clique of guys up there, and, and the scene's gotten really big I'd like to too. say we... I didn't say we yeah. started it, but we kind of started it. You started it, bro. <laughs> no, I guess me and my brother and his older friends kind of started it, and then yeah. we kind of took it and ran from there. Yeah, uh, and, and you and your friends, I know... You, you, um, you guys would go on Desert Rangers, right? Yeah, we go on Desert Rangers. Yep. I know you guys would plan like um, meets in Pismo and Glamis back in the day. Yeah, that's Lannister. even after me. So I left yeah. at 18 in like 04, 05 I left. Okay. And moved down here to go to UTI. And then um, so I was racing a buddy, Brian Metro, and we had parts. We had Total Chaos, a, a Ken, Gen 2 caddy kit. And I walked in there to get parts one day and I see the boss, Nicole, and I'm like, hey, do you guys need anybody to sweep your floor? And she's like, yeah, come in on Monday. And I'm like, holy sh she actually said yes. Yeah, dude. So I came in on Monday and it's been 18 years. So like that's amazing. Started man. sweeping floors and then cutting tubes, bending notching, and now I've worked my way up into R and D. So I work with her husband Matt. Okay. Uh in R and D designing new parts and whatnot. So Yeah, dude, Matt and Nicole are legends. Man. Yeah, I mean, Matt dude. used to race stock mini and an Nissan in like early 90s and, so and she was always helping him so she takes like the business side of it and he takes the fabrication side of it it's it's a really good team and great combo i mean there's six of us who have all been there for 15 years amazing so we've all been there it kind of speaks to who they are as people and who the company is as a company i mean there's only like six or seven companies left in the industry that haven't sold out right i mean true there's, us there's, there's king true. Mm -hmm. and curry a handful of others but everybody else has kind of sold and i mean that's their thing, but yeah, yeah. we're all really passionate, and it's it's our life, it's our family. I mean, I've become I don't want to say an adult, but no, kind man. of an adult there. So we're never growing. We're never up, growing ever. up ever. <laughs> for sure, dude. So yeah, I mean that's that's kind of my history. Um, and then so I bought this truck from my boss Matt in probably 2016 or 15, okay. and it was like camper shell hunting guys truck, 
and it it had like spring over Devers on it and everything and like a stock width kit and it was it was cool for for that for him that's what he was doing and then I took it and this is the second truck I bought from him and it's like a, a thing at the shop where he's like you just destroy all my trucks that I sell you because <laughs> I had an old truck people may know like it was a 86 blue we had a camper shell on it and my name on Desert Rangers was Camper Shell Fun. Let's go. And like I used to, it was like a sleeper and I used to beat the hell out of it. So it sounds like the, uh, like a Pizza Planet truck. Oh, it totally yeah. was a Pizza yeah. Planet truck. And yes. it, it, you, oh my God, it just got roached. Do you, do you have any like vids or pictures? I have some pictures I'll send you of right, like cool. with me and Adam Householder and those guys in Glamis jumping yes. it ridiculously high and just doing dumb stuff with it. Oh, I love but, it, dude. That's. <laughs> Dude, you guys, like, all everybody he's mentioning are literally, like, golden age of pre-runners, man. Um, first time I had seen Total Cast, I was um, on my way out to uh, an event at the ROR, uh, the Rialto. Oh, this is, I was probably there with you. Probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and honestly, like, going out there, I think I was pulling in and with my with my body lift and upper Fabtech arm frontier. I had a Fabtech arm Mazda, so I was yeah. right there with you. <laughs> and pulled in, and I seen this uh, the single cab Toyota pickup with like a total a total chaos on the back fender but it was a stenciled in total chaos <laughs> it just looked so punk rock and hardcore i actually told them we need to bring back the old anarchy a punk oh rock yeah logo. dude yes like, yes we had that logo oh, you we have need to. to bring it back yeah. dude nicole <laughs> dude let us dude can we like help <laughs> yeah, let, we, let's let talk us about help it. you yeah we'll talk about it later <laughs> yeah. but you guys if you guys think total chaos needs to bring that back I, I'd be first in line to pick it up, dude. Yeah, it'd be really cool. Dude, you guys, Total Chaos is uh, practically, you know, like we mentioned earlier, um, uh, we've mentioned in the past in other episodes how Camberg has been a really big part of the scene. Total Chaos is just as deep with, with pre-runners. And I think the special thing about Total Chaos is Total Chaos has stayed true to, like, the pre-runners. Like, that's what they do, right? Um, and moving into, like, Overland stuff and just everything they do, but their 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 quality, their parts, everything is just so freaking well-tested, so much R&D, so much rad stuff. One of my heroes, Dan Vance, the guy who I've always looked up to, <laughs> rocked, rocked freaking Total Chaos oh, yeah. for years, literally has set records in a, in a Total Chaos built truck. Yeah, yeah. And that thing is just... Phenomenal. Let, let's cut to a little clip of, of Dan Vance. Let's do it. Let's see it. <laughs> so, Dan yeah, so let me drive every now and again. So, like, I was helping him for yeah. a while. After I helped Brian Metro with stuff, we kind of went our separate ways. Okay. Yeah. And I started helping Dan. He did like V8 swap on his truck, the Kung Fu truck. Yeah, dude. And that, how legendary was all dude, that? That I mean, truck was cool. I just remember, like, Dan must have been an idiot to just give me the keys. Like, here you go, take it for a spin. So, we'd be in Glamis and like, he'd let me jump it and stuff. And, yeah. like, I remember this little, like, pedal box of the pedals. It was like this little, like, six inch area. You'd have all three pedals. Yeah. And, like, one thing I always stand by that Dan always told me is he's like, automatics. They're for sissies. Two pedals are for bicycles. <laughs> I, I always live by that. The golden age of pre-runners, guys. I'm telling you, we got to do like some sort of documentary <laughs> someday on that. What do you think, Nick? I'm down, dude. Yeah, there, there's, there's so many cool trucks. No, yeah. like when 1450 was like trucks with doors and like yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. actually had to have license plates and everything. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's kind of morphed and like it's super cool the way it is. But but uh, but that was so true to what it was. Oh, totally. And, and it kind of kept like a level playing field for a lot of people participating. I guess we'll hop into the truck now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 we, I think we got to bring back the Terra Crew podcast. And uh, Nick, what do you think about that? Yep. Do yeah. it in depth. Deep, a deep dive of total chaos. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be freaking awesome. I think we got to do that, guys. We we were doing it for a little bit, but so many things, so many projects, huh, Nick? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nonstop. For Nick's life. Back to it. Yeah, back we got to get back to it for sure, guys. So anyways, uh, we'll hop into Mike's truck. But, dude, stoked you worked there. Um, now you have this truck. Now you ruined it according yes, to, according to, to, Matt, to my your boss. boss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when we made the one-inch kit, we made an extra just in case and that ended up on my truck dun, um, dun, dun, and there it is and you know i get a lot of people going what you know what is like the secret of the front end and it's really not that secret like it's literally one inch wider than stock the shocks are oe fox like replacement coilovers you would get for your stock width truck with a one inch longer rod end the bypass is a stock length bypass that you would put on a stock length truck with the one inch longer rod end yeah and it's just valving like carl mason at shock talk is my guy like we went to high school together after a few times riding in my truck after he told me what to put in it, I was just blown away. And I'm not, I'm a full believer. Carl is a hydrodynamics guru. He is that's, very, very smart. That's amazing. And, and as you guys 
look, if we could, if we can cut back to, I don't know if we've shown it yet, but we got to cut to some shots of this thing just eating up <laughs> a lot of the desert. As he said, man, valving is key. You can have a lot of travel, man. If your shocks aren't valved and it's not right, totally. it means nothing. Like we do it some stuff nothing, yeah. with some very, very heavy vehicles at Chaos and like very limited travel, very, very heavy vehicles, like over 10,000 pounds. Yeah. And I'm blown away. I mean, weight is almost your friend sometimes, mm. but like I'm blown away with just shock valving, how things can work. It's, it's unreal. Heck yeah, man. Well, yeah, let's check out the front yep. end of this Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So the front end is... So this is all total chaos, guys, and and let this let this thing uh, attest to the quality of products that they do, man. Um, again, this thing just eats. We do a lot of durability testing with everything we do. Like nothing, nothing goes anywhere in terms of being sold unless it's got five thousand off road miles on it. Right. So <laughs> we're all the test dummies at work. We all, everyone at the company has a Toyota. And Dude, everyone, say that one more time so the people can hear. Five thousand. Five thousand off road miles on every part. If it's a suspension component before it gets released to the public, and I love everybody it. beats on it, so I like, love it, dude. I love this it. thing. Everybody knows that the first generation Tacoma and third generation Forerunner and first generation Tundra all have lower ball joint failures. Like, it's just a thing. They set the lower ball joint up on uh, being under constant tension, so it's trying to pull the ball out of the socket. Okay. So, <laughs> kind of funny there story. Uh, I started working on a uniball conversion for this three, a little over three years ago. And I started doing it behind my boss's back. So like he would go to car tech, pick up parts or whatever. And I would start fiddling with it. Cause I knew he was like, oh, I don't know if it's doable. We've tried it and kind of was on the back burner and I had been messing with it. So he caught me one day, he came back to the shop and I'm like on the lathe uh. and he's like, what are you working on? And I'm like, ah. and he's like, you better show me if you're spending company time. Yeah. So I show him and he like gets his look on his face. He's like, holy shit, it's doable. Wow. So he was like, go ahead, keep running on it. So it took like, it took a solid probably six months to design and make the first lower uniball conversion. Yeah. And then after that, uh, I, it was so hard to make. I had to make one of them. I literally made the driver's side and tested the driver's side like the Friday after I finished it and took my wife and my kid on a trip. Yes. And we went on like a probably 500 mile off road trip. Wow. And uh, I was like, I didn't tell her, but I'm like, hey, honey, it's a. Uh, this is a test. Test part. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it worked flawless that trip. So I brought it back and then we 3D scanned it and then mirrored it and did both sides. And Dude, all that. that's so, awesome, man. Yeah, that was like three years in the making of getting it to come to market with all the testing and yeah. R&D time and everything. But like, that's the big thing for these trucks is yeah. lower ball joint failure. And anybody's listening, if you don't know, if a lower ball joint fails, your wheel's coming off. Yeah. And then your wheel's coming off on the freeway or it's coming off in a parking lot. And if yeah. you have a family in there, like that's the main reason I did it is because after scary. having my son, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not about to have a lower ball joint failure anywhere. Yeah. So. It was just tinkering with it. And then keeping my mouth shut about it has been so hard because it was, I was so proud of it. Like, yeah. it's such a cool thing. You're like, it's happening, it's but happening I don't want to. Exactly. Yeah. And then a few people would see it on trips. And they're like, what is that? And I'm like, ah, nothing. Don't yeah. look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like the front end's one inch wider. Uh, it's a 2.5 coil over 2.5, 2.2 bypass and 2.0 by one and a half inch stroke uh, Fox bump stop. Yeah, and I mean, typically guys, we can kind of hop in here, but again, like he said, it's one inch, so I'm like kind of peeking in, but yeah, it's, nothing it's super freaking spectacular. awesome. And it has, it has a spindle gusset. These trucks have a little, I don't want to say flimsy spindles, but they look a little flimsy, but okay. if you put a gusset on them, I mean, you guys see how I beat it. And uh, I have never been to spindle. I've never been to frame. Yeah. I've never had any like parts bend, and I'm not easy on it. Uh, so yeah, the front end's pretty simple. Uh, the bumper my boss Matt made. Um, so 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 you said it's a two point. I can't see uh, the bypass. Two point five two two bypass. Two point five. And it's two, only two like two a bypass. six and a half inch stroke or something. It's not very long, much stroke. Wow. It's not even an eight. And then and then this 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 bumper you uh, said your boss made? Matt made and it's all bolt on actually like it bolts to the front diff mounts and then the front frame horns. Okay. So like it can all be removed. Like everything's modular on this truck really. Oh like, nice. Everything can be removed. There's just you know there's just something special about these Yodas, man. They just they they truly do have amazing powertrains. I mean, and they're so reliable. Three hundred and fifty thousand miles, three hundred forty-eight thousand miles on it. And what? I'll pop the hood. It's all it's Dude. Like, original <laughs> original motor, original tranny. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's nuts. Original motor, original tranny, guys. 
It's like a spaceship. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Let's go, man. Yeah, That's just, awesome. I built motor mounts for it. So, like, these trucks, eventually the motor mounts go away. So, I didn't want polyurethane. Yeah. But I also didn't want the rubber to break again. So, I made my own. I'll send you some pictures of it. I made my okay. own motor mounts that use. So, I cut a Land Cruiser 200 series rear link apart. I cut the pivot off of it. And then I welded it into the motor mount that I made. So, it's all rubber, but it's all encapsulated. So, it can't come apart uh, right? but it doesn't like vibrate like crazy on the freeway because i've had polyurethane in the past right on and it just kind of sucks on the freeway and sucks to daily drive because this is my daily yeah i mean i have a tundra. i love that it's your I have daily a tundra, but i like driving this it's so much fun dude like, i mean this thing again you guys like stock fenders stock rear fenders See what I'm saying? Pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, like, I put little stuff in here, like, eh, don't mind this water, I just washed it. Yeah, no worries. Right. Uh, I put, like, little oil container thing to carry awesome. a couple quarts. Um, resettable circuit breakers for all my wiring. So that's easy. If one pops, they actually auto reset. Heck yeah. um, so that's just little simple stuff. Like, one thing that we pride ourselves on is we try to use as many Toyota parts as possible. Like, yeah. you don't need to. If it's know, available, I if mean, it's what, available, yeah. use it. Like, stock lower ball joint bolts and everything that holds the steering knuckle like yeah everything factory is pretty good hell yeah like it's just the way that toyota is and like i do some motorcycle testing too it's the same with that like mm. factory parts are good like yeah stock stuff is good it has let's try to make it work how can it we goes make through it work? so much durability testing that you know it's good heck yeah don't mind that water leak no yeah no. <laughs> um but yeah it's a stock radiator stock fan stock Jeez. air filter yeah like everything i mean you just go much. everywhere with this four-wheel drive everywhere like i've actually and drove, fast i drive it a lot in four-wheel drive i didn't used to i used to be two-wheel drive guy with a locker yeah and i've started to slowly change my ways and drive in four a lot more like it it drives through the bumps a lot better it doesn't like when you're in two-wheel drive and you're pinning it everything gets kind of like uh tensed up and bound up and the suspension doesn't work right so like yeah. if you're in four-wheel drive easier on the throttle Everything works a lot better. You and it's kind of just easier <laughs> easier on everything oh, in a way. Oh, it's easier on the drivetrain. Yeah. The only thing that's not original drivetrain is the rear differential went out two years ago, something like that, on my way. Actually, it started going out in Glamis. Okay. And so I played for the rest of the day and then drove it home. And by the time we were like coming through Morongo, my wife and I could barely have a conversation because it was just like growling so bad <laughs> yeah, in the cab. And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Hey, it'll be all right. We'll make it home. We're going to hear like, come on. <laughs> we'll be all right. <laughs> but that's the only thing drivetrain not original. Other than that, yeah. everything's original. And then what what size wheel and tire so are you going on this? These are thirty three ten fives. Yeah, we'll grab the light. There yeah. we go. They're thirty three ten five fifteens. Um, I prefer stock Toyota offset wheels. It's better for the scrub radius. The kingpin uh, angle hits center of the tire patch like perfect with these wheels and tires. So these wheels are actually from like nineties Toyota four buys. Yes. And they normally came with like a plastic hubcap. And okay. I didn't like the plastic up cap and they were like 70 bucks each when you if you could find a non-cracked one Yeah, and I was like this is lame. Like I'm not gonna pay that kind of money So I got these and I found these hubcaps at Cal Mini and Cal Mini, Cal dude. Mini. so like they're not meant for these wheels, but I had them paint match to the wheels Okay, and then I machined a magnet. So they're actually held on by a magnet. Yes So awesome. it's a little rusty in there you see but when you take it off and throw it back on Boom and Obviously, you guys have seen I beat on it and they don't come off. Yeah. So actually, there's a, a dust cap on top of the nut for the front axle, and I just tapped into it, and that's what holds the, the magnet on there. Same in the back. It's I freaking put awesome. A, <laughs> it's I, so cool. I tapped into the axle shaft itself. And it's the same. Like, there it is. It's tapped into the axle shaft. That's, that's so creative, dude. I like it. It, it looks <laughs> so clean, too. It, it truly does. Just it's It's the full, like like Toyota stock look man yeah, the wheel exactly it's perfect and, well it's funny the only reason I put the roof rack on it and I'm actually probably gonna be taking it off is so I can pull these lights like I wanted lights for cargo for whatever for amber light yeah and I didn't I was scared to weld onto my cab mm. and I'm like I need to do it uh, I'm not gonna do it so I bought a roof rack and drilled holes in the roof which is a terrible idea <laughs> and, that, and that's when your boss got a little more upset <laughs> yeah, with you like, you really it. So I don't know. I'm Dude, but need... but it's worth it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's working out. Oh no, it's working out. I mean, again, and it's pretty low key. It's not like it's like it's not like a crazy. ridiculous huge rooftop tent, cargo yeah. box, everything. Yeah. Um. So like the lights in the back, I have this. I I ride dirt bikes a lot. Um. 
I, and Nick, Nick is our light guy now. Thank you, Nick. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Nick. <laughs> light guy right here. Here you go. Light guy now. Oh, perfect. So I built like a little roll cage. So when I have my bike yeah, in here, see. I didn't want the swing arm to hit the light panel. Okay. So like I built this little roll cage for the light box. Perfect. So man. it can hit that and not do anything. So that's like, I also have lights. Where are they? Forward little thinking. Ones, little ones under the bed rails too. Oh, clean. So just keep everything clean and simple and used. Nice. So we can go into the back. The back is a bit of a, it is on better or worse. Oh, you can leave them on. Okay. Sure. No problem. So the back. Tell us about the back, the magic of this thing, man, please. <laughs> so the back is a, it's deeper F67s. It's not anything like special leaf spool. It kind of is. I'll get into that, I guess. Uh, the leaf spring hangers are total chaos. The shackles are total chaos. The shackle mounts are total chaos. Just kind of with where I located them. Mm -hmm. Matt Helton, you know the secret numbers. Okay. You know, 12 inch shackles over the frame. Okay. I can give you guys the numbers of where I mounted the shackle. It's not a secret. But no, like, no, no, that's works, fine. It works really, really well. Or do I buy 16s? Do I buy 14s? Do I buy 16s? And then I just one day was like, I'm swiping the card. I'm buying 16s. Just do it. So I bought them and then I'm like, okay, well, I got to figure out the wheel wells. So I just pulled the bed off and I notched the frame in because on these trucks, the tire's really close to the frame rail. Okay. And there's no way to fit the shock outside the frame rail unless you notch the crap out of the frame right so i knocked the crap out of the frame there it is the shocks are like literally these are the shock bolts right there wow just right on top just right on top and so yes. what i used is a strut style upper shock mount so just it's literally the front shock circle off of the front of this truck okay it's a three bolt aluminum fox piece it literally i used the fox one on the back awesome. so that way i didn't have to build tabs or again anything. not reinventing the wheel kind of utilizing the wheel, just yeah used fox's shock circle and i put it way up in there i'll send you photos um, way up in there, I built this chromoly thin metal structure that mounts the upper shock mount, and it's way up in there. Like, literally, that's it right there. That's so wild. It's right up here on the top. There's 16s, and it's like 17 inches of travel, um, but no fiberglass, no nothing. With a notched. Yeah, with the notched frame, uh, but not C-notched up, only C-notched in from the side. Mm. So, Toyota's come with a little, like, bracket that hangs down for the bump stop to hit. I took that off. And then just leveled like the the bottom of the shock right up there. Yeah. So okay. I basically, yeah, I timed it to where when the shock comes all the way up, the frame is fully smashed out into like uh, I bought an Amazon foam bump stop. Okay. And uh, the shocks I decided to go with were Fox. Everything is in the front of Fox, so I went Fox. Cool. Um, but I didn't want bypass tubes because there was just no room around the shock to mm. put anything. So I went with a Fox 2.5 internal bypass. Mm. And it's harder to tune, which is what Carl at, at Shock Talk told me, but. Once it's right, it's good. It doesn't click. It's just quiet and it works really well. It's yeah. like a, it's position sensitive. So it's like, let's say four holes, three holes, two holes, one hole for the uh, uh, fluid to bypass. Okay. And then as it gets into the bump zone, it basically just locks out and forces all the fluid through the piston and gets real stiff in that last little bit. That's why I didn't end up going with a hydraulic bump in the back. Plus it would have been even more stuff to mount. Right, right. So, hey, but I mean, dude, you know these things are so incredibly well tuned it literally just soaks it all up Thanks, i mean yeah. i mean you're not bucking from what we see right, in the yeah, videos it looks like you're pretty well leveled it's pretty well over leveled. a couple foot i want to this funny that that video you guys posted like everybody else is like it's amazing and i'm like no no there was one kick i didn't like it there was uh, just like a little kick it wasn't even anything bad but it's like i see that and it bugs yeah. me so I, go, I gotta fix it you're like it's like a guitar player like a musician who's like ah oh, that one note and everybody's like no it's yeah, good exactly, and you're like no exactly. no, no, like, dude, no no it's, it's trash I heard we gotta it. do it again exactly and people are like <laughs> it bottomed out i heard it and but it's funny if you look on that side or even on this side like yeah. the when the tire comes up it hits um the wheel well, which I think that side's missing the front. Yeah. It'll hit there a little bit, and it'll hit there a little bit. But, I mean, I even have the stock mud flaps. Yes. And, like, I just wanted it stock. Here, I'll get them here. Pretty stock. Dude, yes. So, you can see that coilover way up in there. Or, I mean, not coilover, sorry. The internal bypass way, way up in there. Yeah, there it um, is. It's it's hitting pretty well. It rubs, you can see right there on the front. And it rubs when it articulates here on the side. Yeah. But so Again, guys, everything's so tucked in here. Um, I see you reinforced all that. Oh, for the shock tire. There it is, yeah. Yeah, so it's all this big chromoly structure. I, it's pretty lightweight. So I come from a background of my boss, working with my boss, Matt. He's taught me pretty much everything I know. Yeah. And he came from a buggy background originally. So he worked at Suspensions Unlimited back oh, in the okay. day. Oh, okay. Okay. And before they were Suspensions Unlimited sand cars, it was Suspensions Unlimited buggies, like race car buggies. So, like, they have a deep, deep history with race cars. That's where Danny Porter came from. Wow. Uh, yeah, all the people, legends, dude. Yeah, a lot of people came out of uh, Suspensions Unlimited. So, like, my boss comes from a really lightweight background. So, like, 
Yeah, for for those of you that don't know, Porter Race Cars is like legendary yeah, freaking they trophy did a, trucks. A lot um, of stuff, yeah. One a lot of great stuff. Trucks. They were right here too, right? Corona? They were in Riverside somewhere. Heck yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and a lot of dudes came out of there building stuff really lightweight. I built stuff pretty lightweight using chromoly. Like if it's if it's going to be three sixteenths or quarter inch mild, then I'm just going to build it out of eighty thou chromoly or or one twenty five is heavy. So like the whole shock tower assembly is all 80 thou or 125 thou chromoly yeah uh plate and it's it's just light it works um it doesn't need to be super heavy the heavier it is the stronger it has to be is kind of the mentality right. behind it it needs to be strong in the right places right um, i mean and the truck's pretty lightweight it looks like you've kept it pretty pretty light do yeah. you do you carry spares back uh, here yes yeah, so i carry a cooler this box is, is a harbor freighter okay it's a it's a trailer tongue box and I was able to fit dirt bikes in there that way. Right on. Um, and then I put another pit box here that has spare parts, like a spare axle and, and stuff like that, and a cooler right here. Do but you I'm, run that when you're driving the truck? Yeah. Oh, wow. So okay. I had that in there at the, the Terra Crew Day. Oh, okay. Um, and one of the straps may or may not have broken and just sent shit flying all over the bed. Dude, that and awesome. the, there's some awesome <laughs> videos of this truck from that day, too. Yeah, I was, was telling Nick there's some videos that like were beasting online. They were like Dude. getting really big, shared a lot. Easy. Yeah, so yeah pe people love this truck, dude. I don't. I, uh, do you understand how much people love this truck? It's funny because I told my boss when I built it, I'm like, I'm gonna build a sleeper. People are gonna like it. It's gonna get more looks than like long travel fiberglass. And <laughs> he's is, like, dude. why? I'm, I'm telling you, it's gonna do it. Yeah. And sure and, enough, and there like, it is. It, yeah. There it is. Yeah. It, and it's not. It. It's really not that special. Like it's super attainable. Like, yeah. good tune shocks, and good leaf springs. I like, bet. I bet your truck just like. Loved that course at speed metal. Yeah, it was, I just kept going around. I literally, when I went home, I went home because I'm like, I can't give anybody else rides. Nobody else is here to give rides to. Like, I just wanted <laughs> yes. to keep going around it. Yeah. Like, I, I literally did it 10, 15 times. Like, yes, over dude. and over and over. And that was, that was a good four mile, yeah. four mile loop. So, mm -hmm. so what did, what did you think of speed metal, man? Like, I what did you think of all that? Yeah. Fun? Like, I thought the whole vibe was cool. It was cool having the drift stuff there. I actually, well, after seeing BJ's thing, I didn't want to do, I was going to bring this, yeah. and let's go do the, the drift course. I was yeah. like, oh, we're doing this thing. Yeah. And I saw that thing and I was like, yeah, maybe not. So yeah, much. maybe not today. But, <laughs> but it was really cool. It was cool seeing like the Eisenhower truck. I, I've never met any of those dudes. Yeah. They all seem super cool. But and like the, the, the quality the most, of build and everything is The most so down to earth, wonderful people, dude. Totally. I mean, like I, everybody, I'm telling you, dude, everybody is so stoked on this thing. Like, I think after there was a video from, from Speed Metal, like we had said, that came out of this thing just eating up like a pretty cool whoop section. And that was getting sent to us, to our <laughs> friends from everywhere. So, yeah, very like, cool. It and, was cool just getting to meet a lot of dudes I had never met, seeing trucks I had never seen in person. We kind of yeah. like stay huddled in our own little thing at Total yeah. Chaos. Um, so it was cool to get out and just go see people, get to drive the course. Dude, we'd love to see, see Total stuff. Chaos um, next year there, no, man. Totally. Yeah, yeah that'd be so cool. It. Yeah. So we're going to, yeah, we actually, dude, I mean, kind of a uh, little little side side thing right here. We're going to do we're gonna do another event in, I can't really say the location yet, but it's northern L.A. County-ish area. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, and also we're doing another speed metal, which is going to be pretty awesome. It was four miles, um, this past year. Yep. We're going to try to extend that a little, maybe five, six miles. Um, and, uh, we're going to get a little more organized than we were this year. We didn't expect so many people to come to speed metal this I mean, year. First so year is always things like that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was but total the turn, chaos. The people yeah, there, see what I did like, there? Huh, you like that? No. Okay. <laughs> the people are right. there. Like you can see that there's a, there's a need for that. There's a yeah. want for that. It's the core people the pre-runner group the grassroots pre the real pre 12 road raceway like we talked about like that totally. was the thing and it felt very real 12 road raceway to me cool man which was it, super cool that oh, that's it dude goals nick we're good we're done <laughs> Character's over that's it guys later guys What's this episode's over is, when i started at chaos we were going to off-road expo or whatever and i remember being so butthurt that i wasn't old enough to go to the after party you guys have the oh, after parties that's right and i remember being the like 18 and over i remember being like I'm gonna go. Home. I remember I'm those. Go, God dang! Like, I remember like my girlfriend and her friends were going. I was like, God dang it! I can't even go. This sucks. You were 17. I right was about 17. To... Nah, was it 21 or 18 and over? Oh, I'm 21. In... 21. You're yeah, right. I was gonna say because I was yeah. like 19 and I couldn't go and I was yeah. so bummed. Yeah, the good dude. Those days, dude. Oh my God, the Duraline days were awesome, super epic. And honestly, dude, that's all Terra Crews trying to do is like maybe not go as crazy as some of the Duraline days, but definitely like more of like a. 
like everybody's welcome. We totally. want all different types of builds to come out. That's why we kind of had that course. That's why that course was so important to us at Speed totally, Metal. Yeah. We want to create courses where everybody can come out with mid treble kits. It was doable. It was totally, totally doable. Like it wasn't ridiculous. Right. I expected it to get really bad. Yeah, me and too. It didn't get that bad. It like, didn't get too bad, no, huh? No, I didn't think so. But, okay. Um, well, so yeah. well, well, there's feedback. But again, his truck is pretty dialed, so I don't know about you guys <laughs> out there. Oh. oh. That is for when you're in the desert. It's for towing. There's a hitch under there. It's for towing. It's for no. towing. Yeah, like, Listen, it's there. for towing. I don't believe you. It's in there. You hitch pin and everything. It's just for towing. I like that. I need one of those for uh, for the for the S13 when I'm towing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So awesome, dude. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Well, yeah. awesome, dude. I mean, again, and then you said stock oh, width, so stock rear end. Can you tell you guys about the, the leaf spring Yeah, like, tell us about the Yeah, let's uh, see it. We have so that other light. Oh, I have a lot of um, funky ideas. Okay. Um, so leaf springs have a lot of friction because it's obviously leaf slipping on each other as they work. And I have the... First, I came up with the idea of coating the leaf springs in... Uh, people used to grease them. People have tried film. People have tried a lot of different things. Really? So when I tried is i took all the leaf pack apart and i sent it out to a company in la and had all of the leaf springs teflon coated it's like baked on just like a pot not like a poly like a powder coat yeah and it's i'll show you send you the photos of it it came back all perfect super slippery so the shack anything touching polyurethane on this truck has tef is coated in teflon okay so Everything is pretty free. Here, I'll bounce it up and down. Like you, it, it moves pretty freely. And this stuff's been on there for a year without being greased. Wow. And it's not crazy squeaky. It's a little squeaky. Right. Um, and then I also... No, it just sounds like rubber. I, I mean, really. I found these liners. They're called leaf liners from okay. some company back east. And leaf it's like a, an I-beam channel looking thing that goes between every leaf spring. And it's like a, a Delrin. Um, so it yeah. helps with the, the anti-friction as well. Dude. And that's worked really, really well. It's made it like... It works really freely, like okay. wheels travel really freely without friction. And I think that's one of the secrets to how the back works so well. Wow. Um, so yeah, so that's one coat of the leaf springs. Dude, that's cool. insane. I've I have never heard of that before. That's yeah. freaking awesome. <laughs> I had awesome. neither, <laughs> just a weirdo idea. No, that's but great, it, but I mean, it's it seems to be working out pretty well, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I had another funky idea, um, which is the electronic disconnect sway bar. Um, what that middle unit is, is a four-wheel drive actuator from AutoZone. I'll just say that. Okay. And so I took axles and cut them and drilled them out so that I could put these sway bars in there, the torsion bars, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And then that way it has this actuator and it's just a shift fork in there that like activates and deactivates the sway bar. It's That's a little collar insane. that couples the splines together. So Dude. These splines, that? that's insane. <laughs> these okay. splines are actually what I used as the sway bar is okay. a Yamaha Rhino axle. What? So it, it has a, a torsion to it. So why why would you run a sway bar in the front? So I drive it a little hard and just a tad. It has like a little bit more body roll than I would like. I wanted to do a rear sway bar, but I ended up with a front because that's the only place I could fit the disconnect, and it just kind of helps like rallying around rally roads and stuff like that it doesn't dive as much in the front it keeps the front a lot more flat so when you're like with the bad lines good times guys you are just ripping yeah just i'm ripping, sure just yeah, eating up those fire roads and just oh yeah dude just just flying way too much fun in this truck that's like, so freaking awesome so yeah it was just like it's a custom mount and everything but it was an idea that i had a while back what an incredible idea look at you man <laughs> heck yeah man this Silly is the, this is why yeah. this dude works out total chaos <laughs> this is why there's so much bad stuff awesome stuff coming out of total chaos dude yeah, let's go so it was a weird weird idea but it works heck yeah <laughs> very cool man very original first Thanks. first and only yeah right. first, a lot a lot of first and, and only's now, with Tacoma's this thing coming out this year with an electron disconnect sway bar and i'm no like way. you took my idea no. damn you to come up exactly and Errol. And I mean, it's really mostly stock interior. I built this little deal on the dash. It holds, you know, it holds two cell phones, and then it holds the uh, mic too. Again, Again. three hundred and fifty thousand miles. Three hundred fifty thousand miles. And it looks. Can we just look at this? <laughs> look at this door card. Yeah, this one's not Dude. so hot, but that one's uh. Dude. That one's better. So I hid the I hid the radio in here. Okay. You don't mind the mess. No. And then 
so I don't forget the radio on, which I may or may not have done in the past. I put it on a button, so when the radio's on, blue light's on. Excellent. So that way if I'm somewhere at night and I leave and the light, blue light's on, I know I gotta come back and turn it off. Perfect. Making it yourself proof. And then, right? yeah. So the same with like uh, with the off-road lights. Little trick, I guess, is like old school cars. They had the high beams on the foot pedal. Okay. So I use the foot pedal for my off-road lights. So like, so I don't have to take my hands off the wheel. Mm. I just have the off-road lights on a foot pedal. Dude. And then it's on there too. Let's see that. Let's see that. Oh wait. There, I can do this one. Here you go. There we go. Dude, that is. And then so right below sick. that is the amber light. So they're Dude, both in there. <laughs> this is like a rally off-road four-wheel drive Tacoma, man. This is this insane. Is wild. This is so freaking awesome. Dude, you're thinking of everything. So like, yeah, I put those little lights up there um, so I can see them on or whatever. So like off-road lights are high beam light, amber light is that one. And then the license plate one is that one. Yeah. When it goes up so I don't forget it up. Perfect. Wow. So cool, so cool, man. I mean, it, like, uh, this is such like a, like a truck to be driven. Oh okay, you know, yeah, I'm you know what I mean? <laughs> Just like a truck to be driven, like no stopping. Let's keep going. My odd idea for the dome light is I used a Baja Designs light, but okay. I put it on a cell phone mag mount, okay. so you can aim it what? wherever you want. Or my kid can turn it on from his seat and do whatever. Dude, that's so, so freaking smart. Right I know now, that's the way. <laughs> This is the. This is truly a, a, a cockpit, dude. Yeah, oh my gosh, dude. This is like one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> yeah. I'm so stoked. This thing is yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah. What do you guys think truly of this thing? Oh my I god. Want this one for your for your Nissan, for Let's your go. Nissan too. So like this little thing right here. Okay. Straight up from Amazon. I'm not gonna lie. It's like forty bucks. Okay. And the temp gauge stopped working in here. So I'm like, I need to know how hot it's getting. So it's an OBD2. So it plugs into your OBD2. And it'll tell you like any live data. You can clear codes. You can do whatever. So I have it set up to tell me speed, time, voltage, and engine coolant temperature. Wow. So that's just always on. I put this little thing there so for shadows. Dude. But uh, that thing is a lifesaver. And that's sure. just in case you know you lose some totally. connection somewhere. Totally. I mean, yeah. This gauge, it shows it's um, what half a hot. Cool it's little... always half hot. So that's why I ended up getting that because my stock gauge stopped working. Freaking then, awesome. Dude, thank you so much for, for sharing this. And dude, he, he shared a lot of secrets with you guys, you know? This is really, really cool. If I really, see any really of these cool. ideas taken, I want to cut. Yeah, we want credit. <laughs> we want, want credit. some credit over here. Dude, dude, thank you so much for, no. for taking us through thank this you thing. Guys for checking. So you let us know, man, whenever you're ready for a trip, we'd awesome. love to go film this thing. I, it's always got gas in it. I'm ready whenever. Let's Heck go. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for coming, man. All right, man. So take us through your fab shop. So I do a lot of the work at Total Chaos. Um, I have access to it when I need to go there, but when I am lazy and don't want to go to the shop, um, I'll give you my little, what is it, uh, cribs? Yeah, cribs let's drawn. do it, let's do it. I have a lot of weird ideas in the garage too. Um, my wife's chair, and when it's cold, I put a heater on a on a little swivel and a toaster. Dude, I, I feel like I'm a, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. My wife's already jealous. <laughs> That's awesome. Just, so the wife gets to hang in here. Hang in Oliver gets to Oliver hang gets in here. Hang. That's lights. wonderful, dude. And then just yeah, everything is on pop outs, like pop out electric stuff. Just basic tools. Hang on those little boards I got from Amazon, and they, check out these little magnets. They're so rad. That hang tools. Like I didn't think they'd be able to hang weight, but like perfect. They're super cool. Dang. And then, uh, I feel like I'm in like a professor or in Dante's garage. <laughs> like this is it's so like cool. My yeah. all-in-one bench. So like I French the welder into the bench. Okay. So the welder's down in there. It's a Panasonic. Probably nobody has heard of a Panasonic welder, but it's no, a Panasonic never. gunslinger. Okay. And uh, it works really well. It does stick and MIG. Um, nitrogen bottle. So I have it wired to where when you turn the gas on, light turns on. Okay. And then you turn the gas off, and eventually when the pressure bleeds off, light goes off. Wow. So that was an idea I had. I love it, dude. running out of gas multiple times. Dude, Professor then, Mike right here, dude. I'm cheap, so I bought a wood band saw. Okay. And then I wired up a motor to it and gear reduced it. So it now cuts metal. So like I have like three different pulleys in here. Yes. So, I, so it turns slower and I can cut metal with it. That's freaking awesome. Um, it's yeah. been such a pleasure no, to be welcome over here to, to yeah. check the shop out, to check the truck out. If you guys have any questions, for this amazing vehicle, you know, the builder, Total Chaos, any, you know, drop it in the comments. 
super grateful for your no, time. Thank man. you guys. This has been super awesome. Thank you very much for coming out. Well, thank you guys so much. Again, any questions, drop them in the comments. This truck has been phenomenal. We got to get out there and film this thing in action. Nick, we really do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously. Whenever. Whenever. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> whenever. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.